Meet Bicycle! Hello everybody, welcome back to another top 5 episode here on Borderlands the pre-sequel. This is the small series where I pick a category and then bring you guys a relevant top 5 list of things to do with that category. Today I'm going to be doing a bit of a personal one really and that will be my top 5 favourite bosses within the game. So uh, that's not necessarily anything someone else may agree on or disagree on but I thought I'd bring it anyway and uh, give you guys just a general reason of why I like these guys so much. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get on with the list of top 5 favourite bosses in Borderlands the pre-sequel. So my boss at number 5 will be RK5, quite uh, relevant right there, but uh, this is the guy that you come across in the outfall pumping station just before you head through to Tycho's ribs and just after you've exited Virago Solitude. The reason I like this guy so much is, uh, not a lot of people will agree with this, but he's probably one of the hardest bosses in the vanilla game that you come across um, compared to everyone else. And I quite like a challenge really. This guy cannot be taken down very easily unless you've got a really powerful corrosive weapon or sniper rifle. So I was attracted to him from that. But then I noticed that into the game he's also really good for XP, especially at lower levels when you're at the, uh, you know, the lower playthroughs. You could go and kill him toughly a couple of times and level up at least once, sometimes twice. So I did like to XP grind off him quite a lot and it really does help you out for the final battle through Tycho's ribs and uh, into the final battle with the Sentinel really. So yeah, he's hard, he's got good XP, he throws out a shed load of weapons as well that you can farm up and sell for a lot of money. Uh, the only thing missing is he doesn't have a legendary drop so that's a shame but uh, yeah, and number five, it's RK5. At number four, we are in Serenity's Waste and uh, we're going to be heading into this secret little cave for pretty much the final boss battle of the uh, vanilla game it was meant to be. And uh, we're going to be battling Iwajira. He is our secret boss um, and our number four spot. The reason for this is uh, he's got a good legendary job with the thingy, that legendary rocket launcher. He's uh, quite well hidden as well, so I like these little hidden bosses that you're not supposed to know about straight away. Uh, he drops a shed load of loot, a good amount of experience, and also he's been involved in quite a few little uh, Gearbox community events. So they've actually changed him from Irajira to uh, Ojirima, whatever you pronounce that as. And a couple of people as well found some different files um, in there to say that it could have been something else. They never did that in the end, I don't think. He never gave him his third transformation, but uh, they certainly did bring him into Ojirima. And uh, yeah, also at one point he also dropped the legendary avalanche shield as well, the real void shield. That was when he changed into a Jorima. So uh, yeah, just in general, the community aspect of it and uh, the high level of XP and weapons you get from him and the secretivity of him made him my number four. I'm a big fan of Family Guy, really did love it, especially when I was younger. Still like to watch it now, I think it's absolutely brilliant. So this is why our number three features a little Easter egg to do with Family Guy. So we are in the Hyperion Hub of Heroism and we are farming this lovely fresher down here called Meg. Now uh, this is a direct reference obviously to Meg from Family Guy, Peter Griffin's daughter. Uh, but it's mainly a uh, little jibe at the uh, special that was the Star Wars special that was brought where uh, Meg was actually a monster in the trash compactor. Borderlands have taken that and put it directly into the game and just for that reason alone I absolutely love it and uh, also she drops one of the best weapons in the game, the legendary Torrent SMG so really like that as well and all in all just yeah generally good bit of fun and good to uh, actually see something from Family Guy in there so Meg is our number three. My number two favourite boss in the game is the only DLC boss featured in this. Uh, there's quite a good few amount of choices of favourite bosses, but I just like this guy because I just totally wasn't expecting him. The randomness act aspect of it all was quite funny really. He does drop a decently legendary laser as well, but uh, when I first came across this guy and he popped out of the ground, with his music blasting, tunes on, I had the volume right high and uh, I actually didn't want to kill him because I just wanted the, uh, the music to go on and on. It was really funny and just a complete random aspect 
uh, put in there by Gearbox. So uh, my number two pick is Te Earworm from the uh, Claptastic Voyage DLC and he's actually in the uh, map cluster overlook as well from Borderlands 2, the Highlands. So uh, yeah, all in all, just a good laugh and a uh, good way to cheer you up really. Uh, so yeah, number two is Te Earworm. And finally, one of the main reasons I uh, put this guy at number one was just the fact that I love the secret, really secret bosses where you actually have to do quite a few things to uh, get them to spawn. And uh, yeah, not a lot of people knew about them and just hard to work out and all that kind of thing. So uh, this guy involves that. You've got to pick up two signs from around the map. You've got to place them in a specific position. You've got to fight a load of people um, that he calls in to help him. And then finally at the end he transforms and you can battle him. He's also got the legendary school masher as a drop, which is one of my favourite sniper rifles. And uh, he's quite, quite, you know, good at dropping that as well. So that always makes it better for me as well. I know there's a random aspect to all drops, but uh, he's always good to me and he always gives me the school masher in two or three runs normally. So quite happy with that. There's also quite a few chests to pick up in this general area while you're doing the route to get the actual signs as well. So it's very rewarding. Two things I love about you know, bosses and stuff like that is the secret aspect of getting some of them to spawn and the uh, reward at the end of it. So there's two big red dial chests to farm around the map. And uh, that second reason I kind of put him in here is he takes it on the chin, this guy. You get to call him a dick uh, a few times and in the end he just cracks and you've got to feel sorry for the guy. So uh, for that reason and the others, my number one favorite boss in the game is Nell from the map Regolith range. So there you go guys, like I said, this was a bit more of a personal kind of top 5 list rather than an actual factual one, but uh, I'm sure a few of you might agree with some of my choices I made in this, but I really do want to see what your guys' top 5 favourite bosses are in this. There's no right or wrong answers in this, but if you want to join in, let me know in the comments down below what your top 5 bosses are in pre-sequel and why, and uh, yeah, I'd be quite interested to see the reasons for that as well. So uh, that is another episode of Top 5s here on Broadlands the pre-sequel. They are my top 5 favourite bosses in the game and reasons why. Thanks for watching everyone and I will see you guys in the next episode.